Hey guys, uh, so I created this video just to introduce a project I've been working on, uh, just calling it the SAS library, because um, basic, I've basically created SAS uh, tools of which you can import into your own project and then make use of. That is explicitly if you're using SAS as your well CSS way of creating stuff. Uh, if you don't know SAS, uh, I would recommend you go to this website called sasslang.com. I'm um, just going to remove that. So basically, it's just CSS with superpowers, as they say it on their website. It's just a much more I'd say efficient way of creating uh, CSS onto your web page. So yeah, I would really encourage that you take a look into it. Of course, the thing with SAS is that you have to transpile it to the normal CSS because your browser doesn't understand SAS. So yeah, uh, and just to clear up one confusion that's out there, there's SAS as in S-A-S-S, -S -S, and then there's S-C-S-S. But they're basically the same thing. The main difference is that SAS as is here is uh, a much, uh, it's more like Python, I could say, because you don't have semicolons in the braces. While in SAS, you write it almost the same way you write your normal CSS. So this web page has been written with 64 lines of CSS code. Well, SAS code in this case, but yeah, that's a lie because um, I have all these imports up here. But what I'm doing basically is just I'm creating these tools of which you can import in your own CSS, uh, rather SAS, and make use of them by using these at include and extend keywords just to make use of them. Because personally, I, 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 I was using Get Bootstrap uh, and I Kudos to those guys because they really did a great job writing all of those CSS libraries. But I ran into a problem at some point in time, so I was like, huh, you know what? Just write your own CSS. So here I am. So yeah, I'm making this publicly publicly available, and if any one of you wants to use it, I'll put the link in the description. So yeah, basically what's happening is you call your class and then you call the the definition of whatever it is that I'm creating. I'll also describe in further videos as to exactly how to use this tool that I'm creating. So thanks guys for watching. Uh, hope to see you in the next one.